us. Uh, we spoke with, we are speaking with Abhinav and on part one of this series we have spoken about Abhinav's interview experience at ISB. So just in case you haven't checked that video, kindly check the links in the description. And on this uh, part, uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to speak about Abhinav's interview experience at NYU Stern School of Business. Okay Abhinav, so people who are just joining us, could you, uh, for them, could you, could you kindly introduce yourself? Right. So I come from a media and communications background. I have uh, more than six years of experience in the Indian media industry, and I'm looking at an MBA uh, now to uh, perhaps stay in the media industry into uh, you know, uh, but but in a corporate strategy role, or I'm looking at other stuff as well. So that's where the need for the MBA comes in. All right. Perfect. Up enough. So if you could quickly explain, uh, you know. How did your interview go at NYU Stern and what was the overall impressions about the NYU interview? If you can share those broader details. Right. So um, the interview was uh, in a hotel and NYU Stern is uh, one of the very few uh, uh, schools which insists on having face-to-face -face interviews. So they were not open to a Skype interview and I really like that. So I also feel more comfortable in a face-to-face -face interview. And uh, so this was at a hotel and uh, very comfortable, very uh, easy going, no curveball questions, uh, nothing to really uh, suggest that this was a stress interview at all. But a lot more, uh, the entire interview was around what you are and uh, what, what ticks you and uh, what you want to be in the future. So a lot of questions around that. Okay, and how, was, how long was your interview and who was it conducted by? Right, it was conducted by uh, a member of the admissions committee. So again, Stern is one of the uh, few schools that insists that only the ADCOM members conduct the interviews, mostly. I mean, most of the cases. And uh, this was incidentally a guy, uh, you know, a member of the ADCOM whom I had met during a presentation uh, for NYU Stern in Mumbai in, back in September. So we already had that context. I had even, even mentioned him in the essays that I had written for NYU Stern. And then I finally got to meet him again for a second time here for the interview in Mumbai, and and, and he remembered me as well, which was a pleasant surprise. So, so, so that the, the first uh, greeting meeting went very well. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So there is an important lesson for people who are listening to this podcast and interview is that uh, you know I mean take the networking events very seriously. Note down the names of the people who are in whom you are meeting at these events and use them in your essays. And if you're lucky, like Abhinav, enough, then probably your interviewer might be him or her. So. Yeah, so, so. I, I, I made it a point, so when I was going for the event, just, just for the people who are listening to remember, I made it a point that I will definitely ask one meaningful question. And uh, so I had one question already and one question that I prepared during uh, during this, this guy's presentation. So I, I really wanted to ask those two questions so that he hopefully remembered me, which he did. So I was very happy about that. And I also, of course, got to sort of write about it in the essays, and and, and that does make a difference at that school. Cool, perfect. So, uh, so from an interview point of view, so if you could quickly define the scope of the interview, so what kind of broad questions were asked, how did it begin, and the overall flow of the interview. Right. So, uh, it, it, the unexpected bit was the first ten minutes. So the first ten minutes were not about uh, why Stern or why MBA or the other standard questions that uh, people are used to being asked or uh, you know strengths weaknesses about your where you want to be post mba goals so there was nothing about that at all the first 10 minutes were about uh, what do you like doing so i had written that i was interested in storytelling and that's how i see myself fundamentally so my professional goals as well as my personal goals are around storytelling as as a thing and you see why storytelling and uh, when, since when have you been interested in it? What have you done about it? And um, I said I'm a uh, avid reader, so he then wanted to know. Okay, uh, so what do you read? Fiction, non-fiction. In fact, the first ten minutes were not about uh, MBA at all. This would have been like a general chat that I was having with a person on an airplane. So the first ten minutes were about that. But then, of course, uh, the uh, uh, interview moved on to more. Uh, the more predictable territory uh, where he first asked me about uh, what my current role uh, at my current company is and then my previous experiences uh, you know in old companies and uh, what exactly did I do there uh, what are the things that I learned how would I remember those experiences and uh, then uh, moving on to okay so he said that you, you've done so well in your life why do you want an MBA uh, why Stern particularly 
and things like that. So that that's how the last end of the interview. So in terms of difference in the style of interviews between ISB and NYU Stern versus some other American schools, so what would you consider? Uh, the the key differentiators uh, to be right. Uh, so one key difference, of course, is that usually in American uh, schools there is one person interviewing you, so you only need to yeah, concentrate on one person at one time, and you don't you are not quizzed by a panel in which one person asks you a question and the other might ask you a cross question while you are replying to the first guy. So that that's something that usually does not happen. So American schools don't do panel interviews generally. Uh, the second was, um, uh, like I was saying, for NYU Stern particularly, and for other schools as well. In fact, a lot of it was around who am I as a person, rather than about only about what do I do currently and what I want to do and why MBA. So the standard questions work out, but I, I had the feeling that uh, they also wanted to see that the person who's written the application and the person that they've shortlisted for the interview. It is the same person. I mean, you know, uh, that that you are someone who's genuine, that you are someone who's not just written those application essays just to impress them, and then you're not like someone who's skinny. So that's something that I found uh, distinctive about uh, you know the American B school interview experience. Okay. So just a, um, you know, side note here. So uh, yes, you are absolutely right when you say that you know most of the American schools have one-on-one -on -one interviews, whether it's over Skype or in person. Uh, however, it, the process is slightly different from Yale School of Management Silver Scholar Program, where there okay. are two people who generally interview the candidates. Right. So, just in case you are having a Yale Storm interview, just don't get startled if there are two people showing up on your Skype screen. Right. <laughs> right. By, by the way, even for NYU Storm, I've heard that uh, you sometimes it does happen that there's one person who's interviewing you, and the associate dean of admissions, uh, Isar Gologli, he you know he might come in, sit for five minutes, ask you a question, and then uh, suddenly leave. So that is definitely a possibility. So, so being interviewed by more than one person. Yes, that's true. And uh, so, just to quickly summarize, a really wide variety of questions were asked, um, right from like really personal stuff where they kind of corroborated your story, what you have written on your essays, right. versus who you are as a person. Uh, they also asked about your career goals, why and why you turn, etc. So right. let's start getting a little bit deeper. Uh, so. Were there any kind of you know behavioral questions that were asked around leadership, teamwork, etc.? Right. So uh, no, none for me at all. Uh, however, they were not behavioral questions, but they were about okay, what did you work uh, on when you worked with this company? So it was more descriptive uh, in, that, in that sense. It was not behavioral. But again, I have heard that in my Houston also does a lot of behavioral questions, but that didn't happen for me. Okay. And were there any cross questions on such question types? Right, a lot of cross questions. In fact, there were like two or three times when uh, the person actually interjected me and wanted to ask another question. So that that definitely did happen. But but it was more of a free flowing, flowing conversation. It wasn't like an interrogation in which he's cutting what I have to say and then he's asking another question just to confuse me or something. We were having a very free flowing conversation, so it it was okay. I mean, it was not cross questioning. It was more like a conversation. So the the key takeaway, at least for me here, is that you know when you're writing your essays, uh, make sure that you know we truly understand the aspects, the different aspects around those things, so that you can intelligently speak about that on your interview. Because a lot of people write like very you know uh, fabulous bullet points on the resume, and when the interviewer asks them that he explain this bullet point, it becomes an issue. One of the things with NYU Stern Akshat, as you know, is that uh, it's again one of those very few schools. I think I'm not sure, but even Harvard and MIT do that. But uh, I'm not sure. But NYU Stern definitely has. So the person who's interviewing you has read your entire application. So while in other schools, mostly these are what is called blind interviews. So the person would only have your resume. In the case of Darden, he won't even have that. But for N NYU Stern, he would have read your entire application. There is a possibility that he would have spent an hour on it and possibly noted down the questions that he specifically wants to ask you. So uh, one of the things that I did. Do for Stern specifically was go through the entire application multiple times, go through my not just my resume but my application essays and think about all kinds of questions that could have been asked. So, so in that sense, it's more uh, uh, it, it can be more daunting in the sense that it, anything, absolutely anything from your application can be asked. But for me, it was also a lot more comforting because if you're if you're 
essays are genuine if your story is genuine then you those other things except from your resume are an opportunity for you to shine and if that person also has already knows your story then you feel a lot more comfortable discussing it because he's already at that base level uh, you know in in your story right he's already gone through it so you can take it from there you don't have to give him the entire spiel again i think you have raised this is a very valid point so just a quick information here that you are absolutely right when you say that harvard also goes through your application london right. business school also j- follows a similar yeah. pattern uh, where they note down the questions the interviewer highlights parts of your application that they want to test in the interview and why you stern does the same certain yeah. top schools that do not follow this practice is ncr so ncr uh, there is a blind interview uh, several other programs like wharton also does not do it uh, so yeah so i mean you know just be just be aware and you know which yeah. kind of practice the school follows Right. Perfect. So, in terms of so NYU is like you know it is a very location based school and they test a lot about why you want to move to New York, right? So, I have two right. questions here. So, one is that you know since you did not get the opportunity to fly down to New York, so how did you research about the school and right. how did you play this angle in your interview? Right. So, uh, like uh, like you were saying for NYU, so one of the things that they talk about is location, location, location. that that's their marketing uh, sort of uh, line as well and uh, especially for someone like me who is uh, working in the media industry uh, or, or someone for that matter who wants to get into wall street uh, investment banking stern is one of the schools to be in because of its location to understand uh, the exact opportunities that uh, i could avail once i am at stern and when i was you know researching school the best thing of course you can do is write to the people there who are in the clubs that you want to be a part of or alumni of the organization of the of the school who are in the kind of jobs that you want to be in so i wrote to something like uh, 7 to 10 people at stern and almost everyone replied and i had uh, and, and i made sure that uh, there were some indians that i talked to because the experience for indians is of course different but i also made sure that i talked to a lot of americans who are in the uh, uh, media space as well just to hear uh because generally indians are not in, that much interested in the media industry so just to you know get a better understanding of the media industry in us i talked to a lot of americans as well so that was my biggest uh, point of research and of course stern is one school which uh, has put up a lot of uh, stuff about it in terms of videos in terms of articles in terms of podcasts online so if if you really there's no shortcut to it if you spend days and days digging out every single detail that you want to uh, about the school you can and and stern gives you the opportunity to do that because a lot of stuff that's not true for many b schools actually uh, you know you will be hard pressed to find a lot of information about the school but that's not the case with stern so that's another thing that i did so one was talking to students and the second was uh, researching their youtube channel their instagram their twitter their website very detailed all sources and uh, uh that's about it yeah perfect so avaram that's great uh, so any parting thoughts about uh, stern anything that we missed about the stern interview or uh, have we covered all the bases right uh, i think we've covered almost everything but uh, uh, again with stern i cannot possibly uh, you know emphasize enough how important it is to know why stern i mean that is the case for any b school in general but stern attracts certain kind of people and uh, uh, for, for for someone uh, who is interested in stern it's very important to be very clear about why you want to go there and what exactly are the opportunities that you're looking for so even the questions that uh, you know i got to ask him in uh, got to ask him in the end i had two or three questions ready about the school about and about why those resources are important to me and and how i can make best use of them so that is i mean there's no shortcut to research as i was saying so stern is and especially because they're reading your entire application that cannot be uh, emphasized too much so i'll just quickly summarize so one is that you know why do you the questions were asked it was not a blind interview uh, which means that the alum or the person interviewing you had gone through your application and they had prepared the questions and right. three uh, it's very important to research about why stern because it's a location based school and there's a right. bunch of stuff that stern has put up so kindly go and guess you're interested in stern and read all that material or listen to the podcasts and watch videos 
uh, uh, watch this video. And that is also going to help you. Right? So I think, uh, and in terms of behavioral questions, not many behavioral questions were asked, but you also, but you need to know a little bit about uh, the the stuff that you have written on the application, so that you can answer the cross questions that are being asked. Right. That's cool. Right. All right. Perfect. So thank you so much, Abhinav, and best of luck with these turn and the results. I'm sure that you will get it. And at this stage, we can do the part three of this interview, which is about uh, Michigan Ross School of Business.